So this might be the last video you see of your pups. There's the two boys. The people who know what markings they've got. There they are. The two boys. One of the things I don't want is I don't want people at my kennels every two to, two to three days looking at the new pup that they want to look for and deciding which one they want. If someone says, oh, I really like the look of that one. Is that one, is that one been picked out yet? I do my best to try and let them have that pup. You've got a mixture of pups here with nice markings. You've got five girls and two boys. At the moment, you've got two boys and two girls in there, and I'm just going back to fetch the other two. It's all to do with when you go and buy a puppy from someone, it's pot luck. Are they breeding for, for the fact that they just want to make money, or are they breeding for quality, temperament, and trainability? Well, I'm a gun dog trainer, as a lot of you know. I'm a specialist gun dog trainer. My videos are on the internet for one reason, because I was fed up with the bullshit that people feed on the internet and the prices that people try and rip people off for, for dogs and stuff. Now, my pups are not dear. My pups are not a silly price because I'm not a puppy salesman. I don't need to sell these pups and advertise them week in and week out. They go very, very quick because of my reputation and who I what I've done and who I am in, in the dog training world. Now, one of the things that I do not, do not like and I don't do is go on these gun dog forums because these gun dog forums do nothing but criticize. They criticize anybody who gives their opinion that they don't agree with. And it's mainly positive and positive only people. Now, the people having these pups are coming from all over the place. And some of them are going to be pets and some are going to be working dogs. I can't say to people, you can't have it. You can only have it as a working dog. Well, I could, but, but I give people the choice. It's a free world. But the one thing you've got to do is bring the dog up right. And the socialization that I do, look at that. those two looking at me. Look, they know that I'm the feeder. See them? And it's important that I bring them up right to give them the best chance of, of surviving and coping with me coping mechanisms when they leave my kennel. It's important that they come out every day and when it's not raining and I spend time feeding them, hand feeding them, close quarter feeding them, socialising with them, letting them run around with those tennis balls to pick them up and carry them because that is imprinting this in their memory at this stage because these puppies are like sponges. If these puppies are getting away with things, bad behaviour, they'll carry on remembering that bad behaviour. Look at that little pup jumping all over that ball. That little pup just absolutely loved that for that split second. And it's a matter of taking those balls away from them, not leaving them in there. And then putting them in there for 10 minutes. And then taking them away again. Because you do not want the pup to think it's his ball or her ball. It's a game. It's a game. And then we take it away. Because eventually I want the dog to realise it's my ball. You bring it to me every time and I'll let you play my game. So I'm tapping into the, the, the psychology and tapping into that point that these pups are like sponges. They learn so quick at this stage. They learn, they're learning to play. They're learning to socialize. They're learning to fight. They're learning to back off. They're realizing when another one screams or yelps when you go in too hard. And then someone goes and ruins it and one of them takes a dump. So I have to move the cage back and start to spray. Now, some of these idiots on the internet will say, Oh my God, he used to jet spray next to those dogs and they're only puppies. Look at them. They're so nervous. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because we've conditioned them in a kennel. We've conditioned them in a kennel with that noise. When they first could hear, it was like, what's all that banging? What's all that noise? But we don't, we don't go, we don't put hush puppies on and creep around in, in silence. So we don't upset the puppies. The puppies got to learn to cope with the environment around them. And as you can see, they can see movement there in that water and it to them it's more of a fascination. What's that? Now, would I ever spray the puppies if they were being noisy with the jet spray? No, I wouldn't. Would I would I would I threaten a dog with the jet spray in the kennel if it's an older dog and it's barking and it won't be quiet? Yes I will. At the end of the day, the jet spray to, to the older dogs is hey, get your head down because if I'm making a noise and he comes in and turns the jet spray on, he he's not happy. Right? That means I'm not going in there and physically grabbing all the dog and telling it to be quiet or putting an e-collar on it and shocking it because you don't need to. It's how you train these dogs. Just because I use discipline and correction at the right time, it doesn't mean I do it with these little sweeties. These are great. These sell themselves. 
time and time again. If I put adverts up and wanted to do this just to sell pups, I could sell pups in their van loads. But I don't do that. I'm not interested in that. But then people will say, he's he's got 744 pups um, on his premises to the RSPCA. Because guess what? The RSPCA have come round and they say, are they idiots? You've put up six or seven videos with pups on and they think you've got hundreds of pups in the pet on the premises i put up videos explaining how to bring on your pup how to motivate your pup how to get your pups to follow at a young age because like i say they're sponges you tap into the gameplay they'll remember the gameplay if you tap into that at a young age that's why it's so important to tap into the gameplay to begin with the puppies will follow at this age without even thinking about it you're their security you're their feeder this is what they do they follow they soon learn bad behavior if you allow it so it's important at this stage in their life that you become the leader and they follow you look i'm building this socialization this bridge before they've even left this premises some of these dogs i could just leave in the kennel and people wouldn't know they may say oh what's that quiet one in the corner like why is he like that why is he nervous because some of them are and some aren't the skill is to get it to come out of themselves look but not overdo it. We don't want to overstimulate the, the, the craziness because then they go into a house and people go, I can't cope with it. It's a freaking lunatic. You can't cope with it because you're allowed it to become an idiot, a lunatic. And that's the problem. The idea is how do you socialize these dogs? How do you get the best from these dogs? Well, I'm an expert, so I know. But all I'm doing is tapping into their natural ability, using their natural ability, their ability to survive their ability to, to, to learn to survive. And yet, why do they have lit, big, big litters? Because some won't survive out in the wild. What we do, we do our best to make them survive because we don't want to see a puppy um, dying, do we? But in the real world, the survival rate of a litter in the wild would be less than it would in a situation like this where I'm watching them all the time. Down by the gate, I've put a, a piece of... Um, polythene so the dogs can't get under the gate if I took my eye off them for a second but in my yard they're reasonably secure but why have I got the pen there so when I put them in the pen I can then take them back into the kennel two at a time it's because they get everywhere they're, they leg it they grab stuff they at this stage they need to be looked after they need to be watched they'll start eating gravel they'll start pulling plants they'll, 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 they don't know they're learning they're learning for association and that's what's important why I show you these videos. That dog's not too sure about that plastic um, meat tray because he's not had that. He's had it in the food bowl. So if it was a food bowl, he'd be licking the food bowl out. Look at him hanging on the back of the other one, look, trying to get over. They're just puppies, look, but no one's fighting. They just, they're just used to laying on top of each other, playing, eating, sleeping, and shitting. And that's what I've done for the last two weeks. Work my arse off getting these pups ready for the new owners and these pups are going on Thursday but I've done my bit now it's down to you lot what you get out of your pup you only get out what you put in but if you don't know what you're doing watch my videos because my videos will show you three and a half million views on my videos people have watched my videos and learned how to train dogs just through the videos who said you can't train a dog by watching videos.